Wai Guruji Ka Khalsa, Wai Guruji Ki Fateh. Once again, welcome to the CQ show. Um, we are going to carry on with the topic that we have been discussing over the last few weeks, and that's around the, uh, the, um, the title of uh, the Immortals. Um, last week, we discussed the, uh, the Kalukaras, uh, specifically the uh, Shota Kalukara and the uh, Vada Kalukara. Um, today, we're going to talk about the immortals from the angle of um, the movements, um, the, the pioneers and the um, reformists that came about um, around about the eight, late uh, 1800s um, and, and uh, right until to the early uh, 1920s. So discussion is going to be based around that. Um, with me, I have my usual uh, panel members. I have um, to my left, uh, the Sri Singh. Vaheguru ka khalsa, Vaheguru ji ki fateh. And uh, to my right, I have uh, Manmagan Singh. Vaheguru ji ka khalsa, Vaheguru ji ki fateh. So um, we'll go straight into the discussion. Um, there's a period of time um, we're talking about here, which is uh, the late 1800s, particularly after 1849, um, which many of us know as uh, being the year of the annexation of Punjab, um, where the British Empire um, took control and governance of the, the Punjab region um, from the Sikhs. So um, it, effectively, it's known as the end of the Sikh empire. So we've got a period here from 1849 uh, right through to the early 1920s um, where we have a struggle um, within the Sikh community. Um, and we have a threat. Um, you know, we, we've seen the threat at the time of, of Guru Gobind Singh Ji that we had, the external threats that we had, the internal threats that we had. Um, after Guru Gobind Singh Ji, we, we saw how the, the Sikh was headhunted. Well, uh, there was a bounty on the Sikh's head, um, how Sikhs were slaughtered and killed, the mass, mass uh, genocides and, and holocausts that took place. Um, and these threats continued. They evolved, but they continued. And these threats came in other forms um, later on um, during the, the, the British regime. So we're, we're talking about direct threats from the Christian missionaries, the, the Muslim Malvis, the Arya Samajis, the Sanatnis, the Hindus, um, and the circumstances that were taking place at the time. So I just want to set the scene. I want to read a passage um, or an extract from uh, an article that was printed in the Sikh newspaper, the Khalsa Khabar, um, which is a Punjabi newspaper which has been printed in Lahore. This, is, this was printed on the 25th of May, 1894. Um, it's an English uh, translation. So um, the, the article reads, uh, an English newspaper writes that the Christian faith is making rapid progress and makes a prophecy that within the next 25 years, one third of the Maja area will be Christian. The Malwa will follow suit. Just as we do not see any Buddhists in the country, except in image, in the same fashion, the Sikhs who are visible in their turbans and their wrist bangles and swords will only be seen in pictures in museums. Their sons and grandsons, turning Christians and clad in coats and, and, uh, coats and trousers, sporting, sporting caps, will go to see them in the museum and say in their language of Punjabi, look, that is the picture of the Sikh tribe, the tribe that inhabited this country once upon a time. So these are the kind of uh, comments that were printed in the... Um, in the British and the English newspapers at the time. And um, uh, the Khalsa Akbar at the time, um, 1894, a, a, a Gursik um, by the name of Gyani Dit Singh um, wrote the Punjabi translation um, of this specific article. Yeah. So, um, you know, perhaps we can go back to, to this period of time. So, you know, let's go back to 1849. Um, what exactly started happening um, in, in Punjab and to the Sikhs? Um, from that period um, onwards? I think, you know, you've already you've highlighted the main uh, gist of what was around at the time. I mean, the British view was that Sikhism, that Hindu, Sikhism would go back into the fold of Hinduism. Mm -hmm. That was basically the, the, their view. And they were encouraging Christian missionary work, really. So that was what they were, they were, they were, they were pushing in the Punjab area. But uh, ironically, what, what's really ironic is that while they were doing this on the other side, they were still promoting the Khalsa ideals and the Khalsa principles specifically for the British Army. Right. So the, 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 the belief that, you know, that Sikh should be Amritari, 
they should be believing, you know, following their ad specifically just for the re for the use of the British Army. So but while while on the other hand, they were obviously trying to push Sikhism out of Punjab and basically, you know, try try and you know over override it with Christianity. So it was a pick and choose, um, almost in a way. Seen obviously the good side, the the the, be the beneficial side. benefits for themselves, mm -hmm. while um, on on that one. So I mean, so that that basically, you know, that that was set in the scene. I mean, at the time as well, it was it was fair to say that Sikhism was very clouded by that time. So there wasn't a, a clear distinction of the Sikh identity. Right. That Sikh identity which Guru Gobind Singh Ji had given us, that Sikh identity which shows Guru Sikh which we were talking about last week had tried to safeguard, um, that had become very clouded. And one of the main elements for that, for, that, for that happening is that during the time, during the early 1800s when there was immense persecution on Sikhs, you know, the Gurdwaras, which were the foundations for, for, for the, 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 the safeguard of the principles, they were the, the Sikhs at the time after for persecution, they handed those for safeguardings to um, other accepted sects within the Sikh religion, such as uh, the Udasis and such as Nirmalas. What was so acceptable about them um, as opposed to the, the Sikhs as, as we know them or who, who the ones were in hiding? I think they were more, obviously, they, they had not really taken fully on the, the route, for example, right. so they weren't, they weren't uh, directly hunted by um, uh, the, 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 the government. So they didn't the, have the physical they, identity. They didn't have the physical identity. Mm -hmm. And so they could quite comfortably take over that, um, the, 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 the running of those Gurdwaras. But their ideals were still Sikh ideals, were they? The, the ideals were Sikh ideals, but over time, again, that became very diluted. So we're talking about the times of the Kalukara, so we're talking about yeah. the, uh, the 1700s. Yeah, so, then you're, 1700s. Yeah, so you're moving towards so that. So these Gurdwaras were... Well, so we're talking about our main Itihasi yeah. Gurdas, Darbar Sahib, yeah. um, this after Pai Mani Singh, yeah. we're talking about whatever other yeah. Itihasi Gurdas existed. And then through, through, the, through the Raj of Maharaj and Jit Singh, all those kind of things, those, those kind of, dis, those kind of um, uh, decisions still maintained, so there wasn't any major change to any of those kind of um, uh, setups which were, which, were, which were created pre Maharaj and Jit Singh. So Maharaj and Jit Singh didn't actually do any major change to these people, in fact he might have just let this uh, system carry system on. Carry on. So was it was it maybe perhaps at the time they were seeing that the the Khalsa identity was more to safeguard the 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 boundaries and the 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 land as opposed to the spiritual side. Maybe there was not enough investment within Maharaj and Jeet Singh on the spiritual side. Can we make that statement? Or I, that I, I, th I think it's a f I think I don't know if we can make that. Pe people have made that statement. Mm -hmm. So there are where people would see that maybe during this Raj, which we might call the Khalsa Raj. Maybe the Khalsa was ignored to a point in that in that Raj, and that it was more to do with the boundaries. And when it came to safeguarding the religion and the identity, and the identity, that's where it maybe uh, mm. maybe might have uh, uh, depleted a bit on, on on that side. So at this time, then what what was what was happening at this time? Then so the main reformists there were there there were quite a few reformist movements which happened. Some, but most of them were very short lived, or were easily quashed by. So there the, was there was, the, there was a recognition. So the people went, I mean, we can obviously look at this now in, in hindsight, but there was a recognition at the time that things aren't right. So yeah. within the Sikh community, there were, there were small little groups coming yeah. up and saying, yeah. hang on a minute, things aren't right. Yeah. We're losing our identity. We're losing our, um, our uh, uh, core values, yeah. Yeah. our morals, and our understanding of well, wrath. Exactly. So yeah. we, we, and, and, and so th those were the, those, there were a handful of you know, small movements which, were, which, was, which, which came and impacted the impact itself didn't uh, didn't impact the heart of the individual heart of the individual Sikh. Mm -hmm. The one, the big movement which actually came in was the Singh Sabha movement. But the Singh Sabha movement itself, when it started in 1873, wasn't a very reformist movement. So it was started by uh, elitist Sikhs, people who were quite rich um, under the uh, support of the British government. Mm -hmm. So you had people like um, Sir Kaim Singh Bedi, uh, yeah. so they weren't there to really change the world, they weren't there to, to change things. With the Singh Sabha movement uh, actually splintering out and the actual change, the reformist movement of the Singh, the element of the Singh Sabha movement was created by uh, the, the Singh Sabha Lahore. So the Singh Sabha Lahore was actually the reformist movement and they were, uh, their view was to bring back the concept of Tat Khalsa. 
So we were talking again a couple of weeks ago. So we were talking about the concept of Tat Khalsa, mm -hmm. and that's what good, you know, of the, the times the, the, of the, uh, after yeah. Singh intervened yeah. so, between the so Badai Khalsa yeah, and the Tat Khalsa. So the, the the view of the actual Lahore, the the Lahore Singh Sabha was that it's impossible for a Sikh to be a Sikh and a Hindu. So there's none of this. A right, Sikh yeah, yeah. had to be defined. A Sikh had to be somebody who has the way, believes in the way of the Khalsa, believes as a Sikh that there's not, you know, there's 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 a defined principles, there's defined practices for the Sikh religion. Mm -hmm. Those are the kind of things which they want to introduce. They also then, you know, it, they also introduced the concept of uh, Sajdari, which obviously is not a concept, these were concepts which Guru Gobind Singh already had introduced, mm -hmm. but they were, you know, the concepts where, um, you know, instead of making somebody who's not a fully fledged Sikh feel that if he's not a fully fledged Sikh, he's then Hindu, he's a he's Hindu. In the Hindu box. Yeah. No, what they decided, the, the, the concept of the Sajjali that no, they are still part of the Sikh fold. Right. They will enter the Sikh fold, but they're on their own personal journey so it's very, through that Sikh fold. Okay, so it was that kind of, um, but I suppose it was visionary thinking in yeah. a sense as well. Yeah. Um, but, but I mean, I just wanted to turn to Munmuggan here. Um, just, just, just let's, let's go back a few steps on this. You know, let's go back to the, the Mahants and, and how the Gurdwaras um, would have been run at the time. I mean, I, I think the, the term Gurdwara probably at that time would have been called the Dharamshala. Um, but what was so concerning about the way it was being run by by what we now know as Mahants? Um, what was the concern, and how would that affect the community? I think what had happened, um, like you rightly said, Sikhs who were very passionate about the Pant, who had the Sikhi Surup, they were led into the jungles <clears throat> because living in mainstream society wasn't an option. Mm -hmm. The Mahants were people, if I wouldn't you know, say they were on the same level as the Pujaris of Amandar. Mm. The Mahants began to, they had no other kind of structure to fall back on. A lot of the Mahants had obviously had this kind of way of thinking, or the, or the way you carry on the Godwara activities were very similar to the way you do in Amandar, mm. but yet the language was a little bit different or the grant which they were reading was different, but yet the practices they kept almost the same. So what kind of practices you mean? The practices, the physical right. practices within the, in, yeah. in the, in the Hindu Mandir? So As you would idol see, worshipping. idol worshipping, uh, therefore when the Mahans were basically made it very personalized, almost like a dera. Mm -hmm. The Mahans of Ramandar Sahib would have a different way of running it to the Mahans of Taran Taran Sahib, mm -hmm. they had right. their own way of running it from the Hans of Narkana Sahib, Gorudwar Sahib and so forth. Mm -hmm. Each Mahant is almost like a Dera who had a control of a Gurdwara and whoever came with the Gurdwara, they did what they thought would bring him more money. Mm -hmm. So if they thought the idols, the idol worship of Hindu God and Goddesses would bring more money, they would then begin to install them in the Gurdwara Parkarma. Okay. So like it's in the Golden Temple, Maharaj, even during Maharaj and Jisim's time, these things began to creep, yeah. creep back in. Mm -hmm. What Maharaj Singh never did, he never intervened with the religious administration. Mm -hmm. He always let that be. Because he, he always was very careful of getting involved in any religious... I think he was, he was a sectarian at heart. He really. was a sectarian. Yeah. He, you can very rightly say, if he was truly a Khalsa Rai, there would be Khalsa principles implemented. Yeah. Mm. He never implemented Khalsa mm. principles. Mm. He only implemented the principles that kept everything yeah. on, a, on, on, a, on a par. Mm. So he was never very extreme, or not extreme, he was never very forthcoming with the Khalsa ideals. Mm -hmm. Hence, Kalifullah Singh and him had regular fallouts. Yeah. He obviously was very staunch on Khalsa ideas to be established in a Khalsa Raj mm -hmm. or, a Khalsa, or, or a Sikh king. So these Mahans were introducing ideals, mm -hmm. uh, idols, worshipping the Darbar Sahib, and then with the idol worship you would get the Sarads. And what's, what's, what's Sarad was basically a concept in Hinduism that if your forefathers, your mother passes away, or your granddad, grandfather passes away, mm -hmm. then the family would do like a prayer for them and do offerings. Mm -hmm. And these offerings would be clothes to the Pujari, even sometimes the Gurdwara you see when someone passes away in our families, sometimes the older fellow, the older you know, Bazurus in our family will say, Ki, Gurdwara Jaya Charunya, Gurdwara that. Kambal yeah, yeah, yeah. It's still yeah. that mindset yeah. right. of what the Brahmins used to do. Mm. Our forefathers are going to need Rajanya, Kapre, what the Pharaohs used to do. I've often yeah. wondered what the Egyptians used to do. <laughs> so is that kind of mentality, the afterlife? Yeah. They're still going to need the home comforts. Mm. You know, Rajay the Lord Paniya, or Sirhan the Lord Paniya. Okay. Mm. So these origins come from yeah, these practices. Yeah, it's a very right. medieval So we still carry on. Idea, it's, it's still dangerous. Dangerous. And, okay. this, yeah, yeah. And, and, and this is what the Pujaris had. They have re brought back this Sarad concept. All of your answers have gone now. They mm -hmm. still need these comforts. Mm -hmm. What it really was, that they would enjoy them themselves. Mm -hmm. 
So all the kind of, you know, meva, like banams and all the kind of luxury foods, which you wouldn't really get to see anywhere else, mm. on a sarad, it'd be like, uh, almost like a, a big feast. Mm. So these things were introduced again. And what you need to understand is, these mahans were people under the base of sadhus, mm. but yet they wanted all the materialistic gains. And if I could also do a quick quote of Harban Singh, who's written the Encyclopedia of the Sikhs, mm -hmm. he writes this, he says, Ke, the Sikh faith was weakened by the influx of large numbers of those adopted the Sikh form to gain material, material advantages. Those people who were, and, and this is what it was, it was a race between different, different organizations, be it the Christian missionaries, be it the Sanatan, si, Sanatan Hindus, uh, be it the Arya Samaj, you know, it was a race between all of these communities, who can get to the Sikh population quicker. So they must have identified that these Sikhs are quite fragmented at the moment, mm. um, so there had was no, an opening. Had no, there. After the Raj of Maharajit Singh, you saw the Narankari movement, which continued, then obviously it yeah. failed. The Namtari movement, Baba Ram Singh, continued, then it stopped. Yeah. There was no kind of structure. No sustainable, yeah. Uh, exactly. yeah, there was no sustainable, no sustainable movement, movement going on. Yeah. Or anything to say, okay, this is how the Sikhs are, this mm. is what the Sikh is. Because Maharajit Singh's 40-year rule didn't really give the definition to what yeah. a Sikh way of life is. No, no. Mm -hmm. Mm. After the Gurus, really, the Sikhs lived in the jungles, mm. and from the jungles they suffered two massive holocausts, after the Holocaust, and these Singh Maharaj Singh Raj comes into place. Yeah. So you got this hundred-year lapse, mm. and in hundred years, a lot happens. Mm. And here you got these Sikhs now without any maryada, mm. without no kedi bani kudo pharniya. What is the definition of a Sikh? Mm. You know, there's, there's, and you're right. At that particular time, you could say the Sikh had become a Hindu. Mm. The only difference was the Sikhs had the Dara and a case. Yeah. And then I think, like you truly said, the true movement only came for the Sikhs about movement, which yeah. thought, you know, hang on, hang on. Yeah. We've now completely lost our way. Mm -hmm. We now need to reform back into who we really were. So who are these people? I mean, you mentioned the, yeah. you, you, you had the first movement that started off, which was from Amritsar. Yeah. And ironically, that one, they were elitists. Yeah. Um, and again, they were very sympathetic towards the Sanatis, yeah. Sanatan Hindu um, thinking. But then you had this uh, Lahore movement. Yeah. So who were these people in the Lahore movement? What, what was so um, different about them? Were they... Sants, Mahapurushis, did they come from special backgrounds? Or? No, well, they were, they were highly educated. Uh, so they were highly educated. Educated for, uh, within mainstream world. Within so. mainstream world, so how we'd see. They were, you know, but there were scholars in, in There were in scholars within, Maria, their own, yeah. within their religion as well. So they were, yeah. yeah, and they were very educated for maybe Western understanding as well. Okay. So you had great, um, well, you had, yeah, they, they were great. You had great uh, Guru Sikhs like Gyanid did sing. Mm -hmm. You had great Guru Sikhs like uh, Pai Khan Singh Naba mm -hmm. and Pai Veer Singh. So, but I, I, if you specifically think Pai Khan Singh Naba, if you think of Sikh writings, Sikh historical writings, mm -hmm. pre Pai Khan Singh Naba, you would have had um, our Itihas, you know, by, like by, by Kavi Sundok Singh, yeah. very, po yeah, sort of po very poetic, mm -hmm. but not as the Western world would see it as a, a very factual yeah. Um, uh, and a very uh, historical, strong with date, a strong reference with references point. and yeah. all those kind of things. By counting Nabo was able to produce those things for the Sikh religion, so they were able to produce state dictionaries and you know give specific meanings for words. And so it was a very academic. And the Sikh encyclopedia yeah. that we know of today, that's Kant, that's Khan Singh Nabo's. Uh, Mahankosh. Mahankosh, yeah. So yeah. it's a very academic, uh, different way of mm -hmm. uh, thinking for Sikhs as well. Mm -hmm. So they were very, uh, they, their thinking was very advanced. You had great Gursikh like Pai Veer Singh, mm -hmm. who used his literary skills to make people think of, uh, so all that history which the which Sikhs had been through during the early 18, all the persecutions and everything, Pai Veer Singh was very great in introducing that in, 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 in novel terms, such as uh, uh, Bajai Singh, mm. you know, for Sundri, Bajai yeah. Sundri, you know, so these kind of uh, uh, fictional story, fictional characters but through a real history of, of, of what Sikhs had been through. That's, I th I, I, you know, I think we understate how innovative that yeah. actually yeah. was for its time. Yeah. Because I think, you know, we, people oft, often criticize uh, new approaches mm. um, and, and they're threatened by new yeah. approaches. But just think what Pai Vee Singh was doing at the time. Mm. He, was, he was using the, um, a, a fictional novel to empower mm. the Sikhs yeah. and to give them an understanding of their, of their, history, house, their yeah. history, their knowledge. Yeah. Um, Almost like, you know, it's like, I think, you know, we, we're seeing that in films today. And we're seeing that with, with, with Vismad, with the animated productions yeah. that they've got. We've seen uh, a, a pretty amazing um, trailer for the Jal Saheb Zadeh that's yeah. come about um, yeah. quite recently in the last few days as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, 
you've got to rate what, what uh, yeah, no, no, five was doing it, at the time. It, it, it was all so. very, very inno innovative. Mm -hmm. Very innovative thinking uh, for by these Guru Sikhs. What about and then, uh, who's the other one you meant? Maybe you can come in I mean, and Gani did the, the uniqueness of this movement was, like you clearly said, it wasn't run by a single person. No. It wasn't a santa led movement. Not that we criticize the Santa-led movements by all means. We've, we've followed many of them ourselves. But saying that this was actually a people's movement. Mm -hmm. yeah. Gary did sing. He didn't belong to a higher caste, for example. No. He was from a very low caste. Right. Should, right. should, should mm. and Classic. I, I, I'm, I'm assuming caste system was very strong. Very, very strong. strong. You've got very to think, strong. you know, back in those times, when you're introducing the Hindu concept to see Gurdwari, it was Darbar Sahib Devaj, Shudra Kuringa in the So the same concept that they were related to the Hindu shrines, those same kind of rules and regulations became uh, accepted in the Sikh shrines. Darbar mm -hmm. Sahib, Taran Taran Sahib, Narakana Sahib, Panja Sahib, all these Gurdwaras, they were not allowed Shudras, the untouchables, mm -hmm. to go inside the Gurdwara. Mm -hmm. They couldn't take there. And Amrits and Chars as well, I believe, that they... they well, they were existed, living. really. Yeah. yeah. And, to be, and therefore, Ganit did sing, from the background he was, from a Shudra caste, and yet, his father was very keen, his father was very Panthic, mm -hmm. and he pushed him into a lot of, like you said, uh, education. And through the education, the worth came through. So, again, I did sing where uh, by Guru Mukh Singh. Who Professor, actually, Professor Guru Mukh Singh. Professor Guru Mukh Singh, who actually put Hanji. the Karl Sakabar together. It was his yeah. idea. Mm. And again, I did sing was the editor of mm. the Akbar. Again, here's this, this, the, the use of innovation. They're using the printing presses. Yep. They're using the, the, the media mm -hmm. of the time to get the message out. Yeah. So again, you, you've got very innovative people here thinking along those lines. So you've got the Karl, Sap, Karl Sakabar, which is mm. the um, mm. Akbar uh, edited by Gangit Singh. Mm -hmm. He's the main writer of that, like you clearly said. And then later on, you will see, like you said, again, Bhai Veer Singh Ji mm. and uh, Kavi Suntok Singh Ji, they start Karl Samajar. Mm -hmm. They do the own Akbar. It's kind of the same as Karl Sakabar, but it's mm. the new version of it. Yeah. This is going they up continue, to masses. They're they going continue up. that kind of prachar yeah. onwards. Yeah. And I think this is what the uniqueness was of the Singh Sabah movement. It was truly a Sabah of yeah. Singhs. Mm -hmm. It was a collection, a collection of Singhs of Singhs. Yeah. who got together, put mm. their heads together and said, right, this isn't a one-man job. We've got a lot of small people doing their own little thing. Mm. Well, we need to do something for the pant in general. Mm -hmm. yeah. To re-bring back the concept of Sabat Khalsa. What is Sabat Khalsa? Mm. And the Singh, the Singh Sabha movement, which started off very small, but it gained momentum yep. in the early, in the late 80s. Yep. And by the 1920s, it was fully established. Yep. Mm -hmm. And that is, where, that is when they were able to then challenge the Mahants or the Pujaris yep. of these mm. established Gurdwaris. It took us a long time to get there. I mean, you know, well, when it's you, 25 well, to 30 years, you, you think about it. When you're talking about. Um, the, the, what was the word you used? Sarads. What was it? The Sarads. Uh, Sarads. Sorry, Sarads. Mm. Apologies yeah. for that. Sarads. I've just come across this this um, uh, piece of writing here, and they're saying that in 1897, um, Tarun Gurdwara held a uh, Sarad ceremony in honor of Guru Arjan Dev Ji. Mm. So these are the, these are the kind of things, and where the Mahants they feasted um, and smoked as well. Yeah. So yeah, we right. these kind of things are going on. So not only have we got Idol worship, you've got the kind of things you would never expect in a Gurdwara. So you've got tobacco, you've got, you've got is, consumption of tobacco, yeah, you've got dance. consumption of alcohol, yeah, yeah. Um, and later on we'll go on to yeah. the more extreme immoral activities yeah. Of, yeah. of rape and abuse that were yeah. taking place I as well. The anything, the guys, I think the community, the Sikh community then adapted like Hukapani, which was very a Mughal idea. Mm. And on the other side, like you just said, Sarad, which was a very Hindu idea. Mm. So not only we, 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 we're stuck in these two kind of communities, we've, we're taking on these bad habits of them as well, and associating with very holy days. Mm -hmm. you know, so we mm -hmm. have seen a, a, a very, well, the whole destructure, or the destruction of Sikhism to its core values. Mm -hmm. When you get Tamaku, and you've got Nasha in the Panth, there is no Panth left. Mm -hmm. And when that is happening in the Gurukar, that's why when we had the Satkar movement, or when we had the Respect for Guru Granth Sahib movement, it was, I wouldn't say on a big level, but it was the idea, if the Gurukar yeah. is going to start providing places of worship and next door a community hall where you can do Shirab Guru, whatever you want to do, do it because the community need these things. Mm. What you're really doing is you're reintroducing these ideas where your Sikh Sabah movement kicked out. Mm. Exactly. Yeah. So, one thing we've got to be really alert about is the Sikhism, like you said in the first paragraph, we would have been a museum mm. concept. Peace. We would have been a museum. These were the yeah. Khalsa of the Punjab, started off here, finished here. No, no, non-existent. 
Yeah. The only reason we are here today because we had watchmen. Mm. Every mm. generation had watchmen. Mm. And those watchmen keep the panth going. Mm. Yeah. Is when we lose those watchmen, once we drop our guard almost, if every Sikh individual begins to drop your guard, you will then and very eventually get sucked into wherever the mainstream thing is at that mm -hmm. particular time. So for our unique look, our unique prachar can only be sustained if we understand it ourselves. Mm -hmm. And that can only happen through our mainstream gurdwari. Mm -hmm. That's why keeping gurdwari is independent, keeping them pantik is very important. Mm -hmm. Just let's, let's quickly touch on the Christians here, because we've mm -hmm. talked about obviously the... What were the Christian missionaries up to um, within the Punjab at the time? They obviously saw a target here. Uh, they saw a target, and they did get some big. Uh, they did get some big hitters. They did. They, they managed to do some big conversions yeah. at the time. Well, let's look Which at Maharaj at the Leap Singh, who was the the the, the son well, of. Yeah, that would have been that would have been Singh. Yeah. I mean, convicted and, and some and some of the schools, the 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 um, Christian missionary schools, mm -hmm. were converting Sikh boys, Sikh girls. Uh, and so that was one of the main catalysts for uh, the Singh Sabha, for the Singh Sabha Singhs to actually start thinking that we need to start safeguarding, because it's very easy now for them to actually convert because we don't have anything uh, solid. We don't have solid. Yeah. We don't have that. Uh, we don't have that uh, that infrastructure to give back to them. But some of the big hits. So we were talking about the Singh Sabha movement. Some of the big hits they did. They managed first of all, you know, the writings of by now, by you know Khan Singh Nabha and Gani Did Singh, by Veer Singh. These really, really, you know, started to to um, to 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 get to get hold. the mainstream. Yeah, yeah. So, and then so beyond they were using printing presses and they yeah, were using yeah. the tools of the time yeah. to get this mass literature yeah. out. But then the other two big hits they managed to get was uh, they actually were able to introduce the Anand Marriage Act in 1909. Mm -hmm. So that was a standardized practice for the Anand Marriage. And I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that because I, I saw a, a a piece here yeah. somewhere. And that was again, you know. So it was, it was an act as well. So it was an act. It was it was law. It was law in British law. It was you know it, it was accepted. Mm. So it was a very very big achievement uh, for for a religion, for example, which you know I don't think there was a specific uh, Hindu marriage act at that time. Which well, what, what really British surprised me when I was yeah, researching this, right. the Sikh marriage act, yeah. the Anand act mm. came before there was a Hindu act. Yeah, yeah. And this shows that Sikhs mm. were so ahead of their time. Yeah. We had the infrastructure. Mm. We had the structures. We had Oh, this is what I think was so amazing about the Sikh faith. Uh, not only were we were religion, but as a community, we were very organized. Mm. And I think other communities took time to fall into that organization. Mm. And if anything, they looked at the Sikhs' organizations and thought, this is how we should be. Yeah, the they actually were inspired by the Sikh organ. Yeah. And the thing is, that structure came from the Gurus. Yeah, exactly. So it was yeah. a, a follow-on from yeah. that, really. Mm. And I think the, the crucial part, like you just mentioned, is what hit the Sikhs the most what really made these people come forward was the cutting of the Sikh hair. Mm. One thing we always underestimate is a Sikh Yusroop. Mm. It, it was okay for the Sikh person, for the Sikh Sardar to wear a coat, mm. no problem. For him to wear the trousers, to him to look like the British gentleman, that was fine. But when these Sikhs, or when the people of the Punjab were seeing, they're cutting our guests. Because mm. Sikhs had a very big attachment to their guests. When yeah. they saw this direct violation of a cultural and a religious mm connection to them, that is when it hit hard. You yeah. know what? If we lose our guests, yeah. we're going to lose everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to lose our values. We're going to lose our community. Everything that we stand for today has been Punjabis, has been Sikhs. Mm. We're going to lose all of that. Yeah. And I think this was the biggest hit mm. when the Sikhs began to see that. Yeah. And I think even now in 84 or even 47, whenever somebody attacks a Sikh guest, that's from the Sikhs. No, it is a direct attack. And when the Christians start to do that, build a church, right in front of the Golden Temple, to challenge yeah. the authority yeah. of the Golden Temple. Yeah. When the Christians tried to buy the Golden Temple and say, this is our property, yeah. when the Christians then began to, like you said, do masses They're right around Amritsar. Public conversions. Yeah, 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 These are very open, yeah, very public, open public conversions yeah. in, yeah. Front of, um, yeah. in front of people. What's interesting to note here as well is this, that we tend to think that the British bought the Christian churches in, but uh, in some of this reading here, the first Presbyterian church was actually in Ludhiana, was under Maharaj Anjit Singh's um, yeah. uh, Raj. So, uh, again, the missionaries were creeping into Punjab at the time. Not that we're demonizing the missionaries yeah. or whatever, you know. We're just showing that, you know what it was? Mm -hmm. There was something to be had. Yeah. When there's something to be had, mm -hmm. yeah, we'll different jump. people yeah. are going to come and jump on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Irish smudges, look, you know, yeah. they, the Irish smudges came around after, again, the, um, again, it was a fight against the British. Yeah. They came in because they liked the aspect of the Sikh faith, the concept of the warrior saint idea. 
I like that, but there's still hold on to the sure. caste concept, which yep. is very Hindu, mm. uh, it's very deep. Mm -hmm. uh, therefore, you know, they, they succeeded to a point, then they diminished. Mm -hmm. yep. What we've got to look at is, the Sikh ideals were so strong, that's what they continued today. Mm -hmm. If yep. they were very weak, very wishy-washy, we wouldn't have existed. Yep. We would have fallen back into the Sikh, uh, into the Hindu foundations of Sanat and Sikhi, mm -hmm. which is what they want even now. They want us to be a very wishy-washy Sikh, a Sikh with kind of, you know, very Hindu ideal. Ide it's like how Bollywood and, and yeah, the TV yeah, serials sort of. um, present the Sikh today. They always present the Sikh as a very um, confused and a soft <laughs> person. And, and the, the, the father is all, often yeah, the yeah. Gursik yeah. and the, the children all the but, money and, and they don't have any case. But then they also, they'll also represent the Sikh as a, a, a non-leader, more like a, a follower or mm. a joker. Yeah. You know, that kind of thing. So he doesn't have the skills to take things forward or, you know, it, mm. it, it, when it's quite the opposite. So the threat's evolved it? now. So the, threats, the threat almost has evolved, evolved into a different uh, uh, form now. Well, I mean, the, this is, this is uh, the, the whole understanding of the whole Singh Sabha movement is our current threat. So when these things stood up, this is the threat which we have, we're facing now at this point mm. in time as well, where we're seeing the depletion or we're seeing our religion, dilution, the dilution of our religion, mm -hmm. or actually, you know, people trying to actually exterminate our, our beliefs. Mm -hmm. you know, that, which is that often is more dangerous saying. than a genocide, um, and that's what people underestimate. Yeah. It is a genocide in a more uh, extreme form. And a much very more dangerous way. way. Very yeah. Yeah. Very, very yeah. under, yeah. under yeah. yeah. It's almost, it's, it's a way of kind of saying to you that we're going to actually destroy you, but not actually let you know that we're destroying, destroying you. Yeah. 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 If or you're part that of that destruction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You I mean, become part of your own destruction. Thing, look, you are. The simple thing is, look, we, we speak in English now, for example. Mm -hmm. It is now, even, even a lot of people that come from Punjab, they have a better command of English than they have a Punjabi. Mm -hmm. If not, then Hindi, then Punjabi. Mm -hmm. Yep. And again, today's, um, missionaries, be it the missionaries of RSS, be it the ministry of Hindu, Hindu fascism, they had the same idea mm. that the Christians had. Yep, that the Christians and the Mughals had. Mm. Yep. Administrations have changed. I mean, this is one thing General Sipinali had it to a T. Mm. Because administrations have changed, yeah, but, but their ideal and tax are the same. Mm -hmm. Why do they want to attack the concept of Sikhs? Because we stand for something. Mm -hmm. Someone who stands for something, whether good or bad, if they stand up for something, you will always be a threat. Mm -hmm. And if you're a threat, you will get dealt with. And that's the one thing Sikhs should be proud of. Okay, look, we actually are the only people that actually stand for something. We yeah. mean something to mm -hmm. ourselves. Everybody else is willing to change with the times. Mm -hmm. We're not. Mm -hmm. and so, I, my guess is if the world goes that way, the Sikh goes that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To show okay, we want to be different. For the, for the, why well, shouldn't be different? For the sake of being different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's take some uh, steps forward now. So, um, we've 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 got some, given some good background to this. Yeah. So now we know, you know, yeah. that what was going on at the time. Yeah. So what exactly was this big push now? So the Singh Sabha layer has yeah. started. There's there's an understanding. People are a bit more united. Now it's time to flush out. Yeah. Um, the 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 Mahans. But why isn't it so straightforward? Well, well, what is what is the structure? What's stopping us? Well, is it the administration is it certain controls? Is it? Well, don't don't forget. I mean, okay. So we've so I was saying we had the big the big achievement of the Anandkar Marriage Act. And then the second big achievement was actually the removal of the idols from uh, Harmanda Sahib. Why was that so difficult? Why couldn't we have just picked it up and, and, and take, taken the idols well, out uh, so hard? It was, you look at it this way at the end of the day. So these Mahans, obviously, they were, it was a money-making business for them. They were making a lot of money out mm -hmm. of the properties which they, which they were, uh, uh, which they were in, in, in control of. Mm -hmm. So what, what they were doing, they were giving taxes as well to the British. Okay. In return, the British actually gave them legal rights to those properties. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, even in this country, hey, if you've got legal right to your property and someone comes in to push in, you know, you, you, you don't have, uh, someone from outside doesn't have rights to that property. Mm -hmm. So that's the whole concept. That, that, that's the whole concept. This was whole, the, whole, um, the whole movement was basically taking those properties so back when, when Sikhs didn't have the legal rights to those properties. So we didn't own the properties. We didn't own those properties. Which is very those hard to think were, about. Yeah, those properties were in individuals' names. Mm -hmm. So Mahant, whoever, Mahant, whatever. So it was within their families as well. So it was carrying on within their families. Mm -hmm. So that, that was the whole difficulty. That so was the whole, Yeah, exactly. That, <laughs> how do we take those Gurdwaras back then? In what name do we take them back in? We, obviously the Sikhs themselves, they, wanted, they were taking that, those, uh, prop, those Gurdwaras back in the name of the Sikh Panth. And that's the whole, that was the whole thing. How does that Sikh punt become recognized in British law? And that was one of the big outcomes at the end of the day, which, was, which, which came at the end of this whole insurgent movement.
So that, that, that's, that was really the, the main sort of uh, issue. This was the whole insurgent movement. So uh, this started, I mean, it was led, the, the whole, so this, this movement, which, the, the Singh Sabha movement, which was, had, had the nice, had the winds, you know, and had his foothold in, then it managed to move itself into the Akali movement, which was really the Gurdwara reform movement. Mm -hmm. This Gurdwara reform movement started simple. You know, the first Gurdwara they took over was Babiki Bed in Sialkot. Mm -hmm. And they, you know, the, the Mahants, they gave, the, the family of the Mahants, they gave them a pension. Right. The Gurdwara. So they won them over in that respect. Yeah, in that so, way. They so won they weren't over. using they, the uh, direct attack here. No, this was, was more like winning over. Winning over. And, over. And, okay. and, and that was led by Kartar Singh uh, Jabbar. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so at that time then, so once, once they got hold of that Gurdwara, straight away was the introduction of a committee. Yeah, the committee was introduced straight away, and the head of that committee was Baba Karak Singh, so another very famous mm -hmm. uh, Gursik of the time, mm -hmm. you know, very, very thing. So then this whole movement, this whole movement by, by um, uh, you know, Kartar Singh Jabbar, who was one of the main movies, they started off with uh, Baba Ki, then they got Harmanda Saab. So Harmanda Saab was relatively straightforward. Uh, Punjab Saab itself. So did they get the committee? I mean, it would have been obviously difficult for the British to... Well, to allow the committee so that to win them over it, and, and get a committee yeah, structure in yeah, place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. in a way, what, what it seems to be is that our what forefathers were using the system, understanding the system of what the British used, understand. and then using that system yeah. as a weapon to go forward. Yeah. Um, it, and that's, that's what, what seems was, to be happening here. The British were very simple. Somebody had ownership of something. Yeah. So the Gurdwari weren't just independent because the churches were independent. They were ownership under the Queen. Mm -hmm. So here, you've got a Sikh nation without any kind of kingdom because they've taken of his marriage leapsing away. He owns right. his places now. Yeah. Like you said, 40 years old, the, if I was the Mahant and I've been running the, the yeah. bars for 40 years, it's my property. Mm -hmm. yeah. Who are you? Got legal paper saying think, how dangerous. Who are you? think how dangerous this is yeah. for the sea. We've lost, we've lost the lands, we've lost legal, and then we've lost our Good thumbs. Our, our Guru Kars yeah. exactly. as well. So and you run. saw how vulnerable the Sikhs must be feeling at the time that yeah. we need to get the Guru Kars control back 100%. Um, in order to get that autonomy that the Sikh is yeah. born to have yeah. their self-autonomy. So then, hence, the British worked, who owns this then? And, and like you said, after that achievement, it's almost like, you know, well, we can really, it was almost yeah. like, we can do this now. Yeah. And they got one of the year both thinking, we can actually yeah. do this. Yeah. It was that self kind of confidence that yeah. developed from yeah. that point onwards. Yeah. And when they went to the Dharbar side, it was a morcha, mm. a very peaceful morcha. Mm. And I think the Mahants weren't as brave. No. And they didn't really want to attack their own people no. either. They're a bit more civilized in that concept. So when, the, like I said, when Karak Singh Huni, we walked in, the Mahans just gave him the keys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And again, the Sarkar system was introduced. They were given a pension. Yeah. And then, you know, 40 years of Murtiya, Singh Sabha, and if you're Murtiya, you know, Sari Safai Girdi, and gave the Rabar Sahib, obviously it's true kind of formation, which it should have been. Yeah. And, and another thing you would say is, is, is very true as well. A lot of these Guru, Gurdwaris had Jagira, which mm -hmm. Maharaja Ranjit Singh had given the Jagira for the Gurdwaris to be self-sufficient. Yeah. So like Apne Narakana Sahib had like uh, 100 kille yeah. of Zameen uh, which was attached to the Gurdwara. So if they had ownership of the Gurdwara, they would have ownership of the land as well. Mm -hmm. So the idea was that the Gurdwara wouldn't have to rely mm -hmm. upon income to run them. Mm -hmm. The income from the land, you have to be able to run the Gurdwara. Mm -hmm. yeah. yep. So self-sufficient, ah. self-sustainable. And a lot of the iconic Gurdwaras like the Rabar Sahib, Taranta were given Jagirs mm -hmm. by Maharaja Ranjit Singh so they could never be out of pocket. Mm -hmm. So this ownership wasn't just about the Gurdwara, it was also the extra land and the extra kind of you know, yeah. uh, wealth they actually collected from it. Mm -hmm. So you can see the greed of, of the person who's being the caretaker as such, the yeah. Man, or yeah. whoever it is, is yeah. obviously seeing mm -hmm. an opening here and mm -hmm. it's becoming a bit of a dynasty, they, they're passing it on to their children. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it wasn't so straightforward then, was it? No, really? the, the movement then had to, the, 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 so we were saying yeah, Almanda Saab, Punjab Saab, Punjab Sahib itself was, was known that you could actually, you were allowed to smoke in Punjab Sahib. So these kind of things used to happen in those and, and a, Which where, where was the 30, a 13 year old girl was raped as well. Well, we'll Tarantan. come to that. Well, literally, Tarantan 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 Sahib was when actually things had to give blood. It was to, the first. It was the first Shahidiyah at Tarantan Sahib. I think four or five things had to die to get Tarantan Tarantan Sahib. So basically, we've started seeing Shahidiyah yeah. take place. So they, they were giving yeah. their lives. So they were giving their lives. So it's, it, it's, it's ramping up now. It's getting much more intense to get these mm -hmm. Gurdwaras back. And it's becoming more of a thorn in the, in the British administration. Mm -hmm. So this is where the British are actually worrying about this whole movement. And they begin and to arm the months. And the, yeah. yeah and, uh, so don't forget, so in Nankana, 1921, while all this was happening, the Mahant of Nankana Sab, he wasn't in that frame of mind where, okay, when they come, I'm going to hand the keys back. 
he himself started to recruit his own army. Mm-hmm. So he started to create his own army, being in the background, saying that when these when these things do walk through the door, I'm going to actually be the one who. So he, he recruited an army. He recruited an army, obviously under the with the guys with the backing of the British, of the British. with the backing of the British as well at that time. And the quick, quick note: the mm. Rakana, sir, was the biggest. Uh, it was the god with the biggest zameen mm. and Jagir attached to it. Yeah. So, so it like we said, loose, yeah. it was a big thing a for him to lose. lose. And lots, I mean, obviously we know the practices. It w- the practices themselves, they weren't just about smoking and alcohol and, and drink, drinking within the Gurdwaras. They were dancing girls. There was prostitution going on in, 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 the gurdwara, in, in those Gurdwaras. Bad stuff, okay. There was bad stuff. This was, there mm-hmm. was murders there was, and there was rapes as well. Mm-hmm. So it was literally, you know, it was not, a, it, it, it was like um, how we would have said, you know, Banaras Ke Thug, yeah. you know, those kind of concepts which used to happen in, uh, uh, Kashioi in um, Benares, mm-hmm. those kind of things which we which we used to hear about mm-hmm. in in the days of the gurus, gurus which the gurus yeah. tried to stop. Those things were happening in the guru cards as well at that point. So they weren't places of worship, mm-hmm. um, and so the, so Nankana Sab itself that was the worst. So when a thirteen year old girl was raped, that really shook the Sikh community, and that really shook these reformist things, mm-hmm. and said that you know how could this have happened. In 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 Gurdwara, yeah. in the Gurdwara with Guru Nanak Dev Ji, you know the the birth of of, of, of Sikhi yeah. and Guru Nanak Dev Ji uh, and everything. So then Narayan Das himself, I mean, he's the Mahant. He's, he's the Mahant. The he's, he's the Mahant of the of the place, yeah. and he himself, you know, he's recruiting his own private army. But you know, when and so literally when when the Singhs take the Morcha, that this is now time to take Nankana Sahib over. Uh, you know, 150 Singhs led by Pai uh, Lashwan Singh. Mm-hmm. There were BP and this as well, I and think, as well. Yeah, as well yeah. so they, they were a yeah. family led, by yeah. the way. Yeah. Yeah. They were not just led Men. by, no. you know, just Bande and the women. They were family led, women led, children led. Mm. You know, you will see, like you said, a lot, a lot of, uh, there's a very infamous Bibi, whose name I've forgotten, who has a, a baby in her arms, yeah. mm. and that baby gets shot in the Narakana Sabsaka yeah. prior to the Sabsaka, yeah. where well, she been, happens. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of Shahidiyah are yeah. happening of, yeah. of, of, of uh, yeah. But, as well. but let's, let's remember, this, is, this was Sudar Lat, and it was mm. a non-violent movement. Mm-hmm. It was a non-violent, and it was, it was more effective than any movement which is happening, any kind of uh, pre-independence movement, you know, independence, Indian independence, Indian movement. independence movement. Yeah. You know, it was, it was what the British were actually fearing. Mm-hmm. You know, they weren't fearing any kind of Congress movement or anything like that. The Congress movement couldn't create this momentum which this movement had created. Mm. And this was literally True. the forerunner for any other kind of um, movement which happened because in India. Because the Quit India movement hadn't really taken off. Hadn't really taken time. off. Hadn't yeah. taken off. Hadn't had a, didn't have a concept. Yeah. The concept itself was taken then from this movement where the non-violent movement of actually, you know, but, 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 but the strong principled non-violence movement. Yeah. So all you could do, so these things when they actually, you know, the, the outcome of the Nankana Sahib massacre, it was, it was a massacre at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. So 150 Singh, Singh near families, you know, came in to, Literally, a, a, a army which was recruited by Nayandas, fully armed. Mm-hmm. You know, 150 Singhs were, were shot down. Um, you know, uh, by Lashman Singh himself. There's, there, there's a, in the Nankana Sab uh, uh, area. There's, a, there's a tree there, a historical tree. Mm-hmm. And then by Lashman Singh himself, he was shot, and then he was hanged to that tree, and he was burnt alive. Mm-hmm. This is the kind of things which the Shahidia, which the Singhs went through. Mm-hmm. You know, and it, it was, it was, it was, it was a shocking sight. You know, when the British came to find out that this has happened, they were they were actually shocked that this actually happened. Mm-hmm. You know, and then obviously with all the the, the, the what, what happened at the time, Narayan Dastin was was arrested and trialed uh, through the British courts. This was an accelerator. This whole Nankana Sahib massacre was an accelerator to put things onto the map in that way, in that it managed then to for us to to become part of to to for our religion, for our institutes to become part of. Uh, British British law as well, yeah. not only in history but British law. So this is groundbreaking stuff, stuff here. I mean, it's groundbreaking. I mean, this this is this is just the, one of the most um, uh, pivotal sacrifices in what in in our in our religion. Mm-hmm. You know, in our we, we we can't forget that you know this this massive movement had jumped moved, made us from people who are made us from Guru Sikhs, Sikhs who are trying to find a foothold in 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 a in a in a mainstream society mm-hmm. now to actually. Jumping and get, and and getting a foothold in which other religions within India hadn't even thought of or you know went and still don't have hold of yeah I would still say they yeah. still don't have yeah. that yeah. Mm-hmm. Gangsar Gurdwara again to take the Gurdwara back you know they done it, this, the the thing started to do this things wanted to take a start and then the current part of the 
And again, this is where the British were very, 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 they, they, they were fearing this whole movement. And this is the, the whole Jerto Mocha itself was an attempt by the British uh, administration to bring a stop to this movement. Their aim was to try and bring this to a stop because it was going out of control, spiring out of control. And if you can imagine, well, you know, felt a threat. I mean, it, it was it, under control in our eyes, but in, I know, but in in in, in, uh, in, in spiraling out of control. If you look at it this way, you have got 500 things who are who who are coming, who are leaving a car tucked, yeah, walking to the walking to this gurdwara in jatas of 500, calling themselves shaheed already. You know, they're already Shaheedi saying that they're shahidi yeah. jatas, non-violent movement. You know, literally walking like this with their hands crossed. You know, no one could, nothing could actually shake them in that way. But they were, they, they, their belief was so strong that the British couldn't push them back. You know, this was, that was the way they actually shook the whole administration. And that's what I'm saying. This is where then, you know, people like, you know, Gandhi or the administrations, they took these concepts forward in order to, uh, you know, to, 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 uh, to, to do their movement. But the concept itself, the whole, the, you know, that was, 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 was it, it shook the British. And this itself, this whole uh, Jerto Mocha, it didn't happen, you know, they didn't get the Gurdwara in six months, they didn't get the Gurdwara back in one year. They had to do this for over four years. Mm. So Shahidi Jatas were going constantly from Akal Taksab and walking, you know, in bands of 500. As in when they're walking, you know, this was such a proud moment for Sikhs. They would go out and see these Shahidi Jatas walking through their villages. Wow. This was like, this was like great, you know, people were coming and do the darshan of Jinda these people. Mm. Yeah, Jinda Shahid, and they were like putting, um, you know, oh, garlands it's... around them and everything like that. It was such a moment of pride for Sikhs that this is what our Guru Sikhs are for. They're here to, in order to get their Gurdwaras back, this is what they want to do. And, and this, this is what they're going to do. This, this is, I mean, I know the Western press and the media did pick up on this. That's there it. is footage of it. There's, there's very old archive yeah, yeah. footage of, iconic of pictures. the iconic pictures yeah. that we see till this day in black and white. They're epic. They're yeah. epic pictures of black and white mm. um, of Sikhs just in this dusty, uh, uh, dusty roads. Walking and down, introducing the color of black as well as a uh, color of protest uh -huh. within the Sikh religion as well. Okay. Yeah. So black was the color Kali which they were wearing. Yeah. Kali yeah. Kali, Kali Banas and everything like yeah. that. This was the, the. So I mean, you've seen Sings laying their lives, Sings and Singh uh, laying their lives down. Um, but the outcome of this was for us to get autonomy. Really, it was to get control of the Gurdwara um, and and to regain that that Khalsa uh, mm. uh, spirit. Yeah. Um, and I think so, um, so the foresight this Babbe had was that, you know, if we get the Gurdwari back and we control the Gurdwari, you know, we will get that autonomy and that self-autonomy that mm. we we're born to have. You know, that was their vision. Um, that they and had. it came true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And without a shadow of a doubt, the, the minute, and, it, and you know where it all started from? It started from that time when they did sing, started to write. Mm -hmm. That written idea, that written element, is a kind of you know, to achieve their spiritual and physical azad, they started from that point almost for 50 years before mm -hmm. until all this came into play. Mm -hmm. And if you think, one thing, Jatada Morjap and, and Sakar and Ghana, what they really highlighted was now, okay, look, it is here, they're going to now put their life down because yeah. they are now defiant. Yeah. They mm -hmm. want this. Yeah. And they're going to go for it. Yeah. Quickly to say, all of these things, then the British sit down and think, how are we going to sort this yeah. out? Mm -hmm. And it came to the point that Sikhs needed to have an act. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know, people say sometimes okay, this act was written by the British and Sikhs had lost credibility in this act. It's total nonsense, mm -hmm. if I can say. If in a way, this was the first act that the British had to give. Yeah, had to give, yeah. Had to give mm -hmm. to the Sikhs, because mm -hmm. the Sikhs demanded it. Mm -hmm. If the Sikh demand, either you recognize us, mm -hmm. Because we are now the legal owners of our Gurtams and our legal mm. uh, sp uh, spiritual administration. Yep. If not, then this is going to carry on happening and it's going to get all over India. Mm. Now, look, Punjab, we're going to take it to extents yeah. of the four corners of India. Mm. So, in a way, the British thought, if we don't give them what they want, mm. this is going to spiral out of control. Mm. So, in 1925, yep. the act of the Gurdwara Reform mm. Act of the yep. Sikh was given Gurdwara, to the yeah. Sikhs. To say, you know what, you are now the rightful owners mm. of your Guru Kar. Yeah. We have nothing to do with them. Yeah. So this is so this act was like saying, yeah, yeah, it's you, this is Sambalo, yeah. we leave you alone. Yeah. And it also gave us the right to actually go and find further Gurdwaras. Yes. So within the, within the act itself, there was a, the, the setup of a tribunal. So within that tribunal, uh, you could go to the, uh, you, uh, Sikhs could go to the tribunal and say, we think that this, we want this Gurdwara under 
the, the SPCG yeah. as well. And then within that tribunal, they'll weigh it out. They say, what's the reasons for this to be here? Is it Sikh history? Is it relating to some incident to the Guru? Is there some Sikh martyr or Sikh, Sikh, mm. Sikh saint? So By weighing all that whole structure out, it could come into the fold then of, 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 the, of the punt, mm. rather than it being an individual's uh, jagir. Okay. When there's a, so this was the, so it is literally was a, a, a so it, it it was that and then it also then introduced the concept of the centralized body mm -hmm. to run to run the gurdwara mm -hmm. to run those gurdwaras as well so it was a free fold it was about a free fold act mm -hmm. it was quite it was quite a, a well written document to a point to be, to be mm -hmm. honest with you it was that act that gave the Sikhs the self righteousness concept back again yeah. mm -hmm. we can control yeah. we can administer yeah. and mm -hmm. we can lead yeah. back again. And like you, like you correctly said as well, it was from that point when Sikhs had achieved that under British rule, then the Congress was looking to the Sikhs for direction. Mm -hmm. yeah. They've done it yeah. under British rule, yeah. and they haven't been able to do it even without British rule. Mm -hmm. This is the precursor to the Quit India Congress, yeah. Yeah. Congress really. That's where they yeah. got it from. Yeah. Where yeah. they got with the Sikh, but the Babi Apne, Babi said Quit the Godwari, so he got the Quit India idea from yeah, there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To be honest with you, the whole fallacy around Gandhi is just quite. In a way, it's quite sad because he got them all from the Sikh, mm. you know, movements, and the, the benefit is always yeah. <laughs> given to him. Yeah. And it's like if you, if people were to look clearly and deeply, mm. they will find where they actually come yeah. from. The other point, you know, I, I wanted to add to that was ke, ke, um, not only the Sikhs by getting control of the Guru Dham, they got control of the faith. Yeah, yeah. The Sikh. Mm. Faith was able to then re-flourish again. Yeah. So we're seeing standardized rat, we're seeing a standardized rat, Maria exactly. Maria Maria Maria, yeah. exactly. The yeah. Part of that, the, size, Sikh, yeah. the Sikhs had different, different, there was no rat, I would say. No. By that point, at that point, people say, but there was no documentation of them, no. of that form anyway. So for the Sikh bank to be united, a rat that was put together by bringing in all the Sikh fractions, yeah. that was standardized. Yeah. Sikh running of Gordware was standardized. Yeah. The Langar the concept, Ardas the concept, Hukunami the concept. Every concept we have today was standardized by the Gurdwara Shrom the Committee Act. Yeah. And the other thing was it gave birth to great professors like Ganda Singh, mm. who actually, like you said, did a lot of research mm. into the Sikh history, ethiki hoya, mm. put, academic, put together. Very academic. Exactly. Yeah. And and we, we, we are indebted to those mm. academics because they mm. preserve their Sikh history. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if today we turn around saying they were all missionaries, mm. Mm. Yeah. they were all this and that. That's not true. Mm. You can't put everybody in the same bad wagon. No. They get the hut cannot be dismissed so no. easily. No. It was no less than a hut down by any shaheed in the pant. Mm. This was a very this was this took their whole life. Yeah. And if today we turn around saying these people were nobodies, that's that's the wrong. No, that's very mm. true. These people were these yeah. people were iconic mm. and are immortals on the same par yeah, yeah. as a shaheed in the battlefield. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and I mean, if you, just, just I want to just yeah. put some couple of stats on the on the whole agitation yeah, movement and the yeah. whole uh, Gurdwara reform movement. Yeah. So, like we we're saying, the the level of this was such that thirty thousand arrests happened during this time. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine the jails were full of of things, basically. Yeah. Of the, like you knew they were. Yeah, <laughs> two thousand were injured, and we had four hundred shahidiyah that for for this whole. And movement. these are British figures. These, these are, are British figures. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. This is, this these is are these are not our figures. No. So. Um, there could be more than that. Yeah, uh, no, exactly. But to see to to see the scale of thing, if you can see thirty thousand arrests, mm -hmm. that is that's showing that that's not showing any flash in the pan. That shlo that shows a movement. Mm -hmm. You know, that shows. A, and these a, a movements, movement. these are the precursors, and these movements went on to the movements that Sanjanel Singh Pindrawale led. Um, and um, we wanted to mention this actually because it's Sanjanel Singh's uh, 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 birthday today. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Santaji was born nineteen forty seven um, today. So again, you know, uh, another Mahan uh, yeah. and Mahan Gursik, immortal, um, yeah. and another immortal mm. who would have been uh, inspired by these movements of the past. If anything, the whole movement of that time followed the same pattern mm -hmm. of the Singh Sabha movement. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and so and again, there was no difference from it. Mm -hmm. The difference was just a different time, really. But the ideals, the Morcha Bandi, the filling up of the jails, the Sikh apne, not the Sikh, the Punjabi rights, the Anandpur Dhamata. If you look at these things, they were actually an advancement yeah. of the Gurdwara Act. It was the next next mm. step to autonomy, yeah. self-autonomy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't just he ends here. Oh, mm. no, it's going to carry on yeah. until that status is achieved. Yeah. So to be honest with you, it's a still an outstanding agenda yeah, on, yeah. The, yeah, on yeah. the Sikh. The story uh, continues. Uh, you know, yeah. So mm. it's not an end. It's still, it's still an outstanding. And until that is attained, the fight struggle continues. Mm. Well, the story continues, as you yeah, rightly yeah. put it. Yes. Anyway, 
we've run out of time, so um, the, 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 the show's going to come to an end now. Um, in, in this short series of, of talks around the, the immortals, which we started from the Charlie, Charlie Mukte, we've tried to bring some um, sort of Sakya, I wouldn't say back to life, but through discussion, we've just tried to make them more relevant right. and, and put maybe our understanding um, to, to the Sakya. Um, next week, we'll be moving on to other topics. Um, we hope you've enjoyed these uh, last few weeks where we have discussed um, these certain points in our history. Um, and if you have any questions or anything you'd like to put forward to us, please get in contact with the Sikh channel. We would uh, indirectly get in contact with us, and uh, I'm sure we'll take those discussions forward. So once again, thank you very much for watching us. Why good you